Welcome to our review on electromagnetic waves. So the first thing we actually need to know is what the electromagnetic spectrum is. And perhaps the easiest way to start thinking about it is to introduce us to a wave that we're all familiar with, which is visible light. Now our visible light is made up of white light, and when that passes through a prism, what you can actually see is the spectrum that makes up visible light. So visible light is just one part of our electromagnetic spectrum. And you can see the diagram at the bottom there that shows us everything else. For your exam, you do need to know the names of all the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, and you need to know them in order. In addition to that, you need to know which end has the highest wavelength and the highest frequency. So make sure you know the sequence of radio, micro, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. And then make sure you remember either that radio waves have the longest wavelength and the lowest frequency, or that gamma rays have the shortest wavelength and the highest frequency. So if we consider what we're talking about when we refer to these electromagnetic waves, quite simply, they consist of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. And these fields are going to oscillate at 90 degrees to the direction that the wave is traveling in. So if you look at the diagram at the bottom there, you can see that our wave is traveling from left to right on the screen. The electric field, which is the one in red, is at 90 degrees to the direction going above and below. And then the blue one represents our magnetic field, which is kind of going into the screen and coming out towards us, if you like. Again, at 90 degrees, just in a different plane. One thing we do need to remember is the speed at which electromagnetic waves travel. The good news is they all travel at the same speed. So make sure that you know that EM waves traveling through a vacuum will do so at 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So remember, that should hopefully trigger a little memory that that's actually the speed of light, and that's because it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Another term we may see associated with EM waves is the word source. A source is something that emits electromagnetic waves. So for example, in your house, you've probably got a microwave oven, and that's going to emit microwaves. It's a source. But objects can also absorb EM waves. So your skin, for example, will absorb infrared radiation and that will heat it up. The key thing to remember is that our EM waves are going to be transferring energy from the sources to One thing that we do need to know on the higher tier paper is how we can actually produce and detect radio waves. So if we've got a wire and we've got an oscillating potential difference across that wire, then as a result of that, electrons are going to be moving backwards and forwards. So as a result of those electrons moving backwards and forwards, we're going to produce a changing electric and magnetic field, which hopefully is bringing back some memories of our earlier physics topic. And that will be emitted as a radio wave, because remember what we said, our electromagnetic wave is an oscillating magnetic and electric field. When that field that's traveling through the air then meets a piece of metal, which is the aerial that's sticking off your house, then what happens as a result of that is that the electrons within the aerial are going to move and then they produce an electric signal. And that is your radio or TV signal that comes down your aerial. Now they can ask you to carry out calculations to do with electromagnetic waves, but the key thing here is what they're not going to give you in the question. So we already know from our earlier bit of work in P5 that we've got to know the wave velocity equation, so frequency times wavelength. But 
you also need to know the velocity at which electromagnetic waves travel, which is our 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. So the kind of question they could give you is here. The sun emits ultraviolet waves with a wavelength of 320 nanometers. Calculate their frequency. So they're expecting you to know the wave velocity of an EM wave and to know the wave velocity equation. So the first thing you're going to do with that is write down what you know. Write down your equation that hopefully you've already learnt. Write down the wavelength they've given us there of 320 nanometers and write down the wave velocity, which hopefully you've retained as 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Second thing we need to do is we need to convert to our standard units. Nanometers are not the standard units of wavelength, remember, that should be in meters. So when we convert our 320 nanometers into meters, we end up with 3.20 times 10 to the power minus 7 meters. Which then just leaves us with our last bit, which is to substitute into our equation and to solve it. So because we're calculating the frequency, obviously we need to rearrange it first of all. So that will give us wave velocity divided by wavelength. Substitute in our values that we have worked out or we know. So 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 3.20 times 10 to the power minus 7 gives us our answer of 9.4 times 10 to the power 14. And remember, because we've worked out a frequency, that has the unit hertz, which is our capital H, lowercase z. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe what electromagnetic waves actually are and what they do. You can describe the main groupings of the EM spectrum and how they're different in terms of their frequency and their wavelength. You can state the electromagnetic waves that our eyes detect, and you can also recall and apply the relationship between speed, frequency, and wavelength for our EM waves.